All righty. Morning, everybody. It's uh, great to have people logging on, and we know for a fact people log on from all over the world. Wow, how amazing is that? Uh, thousands of people have been watching these little videos that have been broadcast on a Tuesday, so that's cool. And we believe with Message TV and all we're going to throw at that, that's only going to grow. Uh, with We've got a beautiful programme, and we're going to pray into that a little bit later on. In fact, talking about prayer, just as people join us and log on before I launch into what I've got to say from Ephesians chapter 6, um, can I say two things about prayer, actually? Greater Manchester Prayer. The Greater Manchester Prayer event happens a week on Thursday, June the 25th. We would so love you to join us. 7.30 in the evening here in the UK. You can log on, Greater Manchester Prayer, on Facebook, on YouTube. Again, thousands of people have been doing that the last few months, and we have an epic lineup of speakers uh, who are going to share and encourage and inspire us to pray for for our cities, for our nations, and for our world at a time like this. How much do we need to pray? So please find out the information, share it widely. Let's have our biggest Greater Manchester Prayer event ever. And if you're uh, within hitting distance of the Message Trust here in Manchester, you can join us in prayer today because this afternoon, between 12 and 3, we have our prayer meeting. It's going to be a bit smaller than usual because we're meeting in our prayer house here on site, but only six people because of these, uh, whatever, so, you know, social distancing stuff. So you need to book in. If you'd like to join us and pray between 12 and 3, you can book in just by email info at message.org.uk or prayer at message.org.uk. And that goes for people who work for the message, people locally, if you'd like to join us for prayer. Uh, we're going to have six people at a time praying between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock this afternoon. We believe in prayer. We don't just believe in prayer, we rely on prayer. Uh, we, we are nothing really without our prayer work. Message is a, a ministry that moves forward on prayer and mission. All right, so I hope enough of you are now with us and people will continue to log on as I do my last talk in the book of Ephesians. Nine months ago, I started teaching on Ephesians on these Tuesday mornings. 20 talks later, we're coming into land today. And uh, if you're interested, if you've just joined us in the last few weeks, as more and more people have been logging on to these talks, you can find all 20 talks on our message podcast and talks from loads of epic speakers, uh, all for free. So it's all on the message podcast. Please do have a look at that. Um, I hope you've been encouraged and challenged and spurred on as we've journeyed through this beautiful letter to the Ephesians. I mean, I certainly have. And I love that. At the Bible, we syst at the Bible. At the message, we systematically go through the Bible. I love the fact that Sam Ward is journeying through the Book of Luke. Ben Jack is journeying through James. I've been journeying through Ephesians. I don't even know where I'm going to go next week. I've been thinking all week, uh, but I need to decide in the next 24 hours so I can get my head together for next Tuesday morning. But uh, as we come into land, what a privilege to have been teaching on the Book of Ephesians. And in the Book of Ephesians, we learn two things. We learn our new geography. Paul says we're in Christ, but we're also in Ephesus. Uh, and the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians are all about what it means to be in Christ. All the benefits, all the blessings of being a, a child of God in Christ. And the last three chapters are all about how to work that out in Ephesus, or in our case, in Manchester, or wherever we live. We're in Christ, which is marvellous, but that means it affects the way we live in Manchester. First three chapters in Christ, last three chapters in Manchester. But we've not just got a new geography, according to the book of Ephesians, we've got a new identity. We're called saints. Do you want to know what a saint looks like? Here's one. I'm one. I'm a saint. I'm an absolute saint. We hear that all the time, don't we? You know, oh, that Colonel Tom is an absolute saint walking around his garden 100 years of age. Or we hear about, you know, these amazing nurses and doctors. They're absolute saints. Well, you know what? No, they're not on their own. Those are beautiful things they're doing. It doesn't make you a saint. No amount of good works, marvellous as those things are, make you a saint. There's only Jesus can make you a saint. And Paul writes to the saints in Ephesus because they're made saintly. They're made righteous through what? Through faith alone 
in Christ alone, by grace alone, as revealed in the scriptures alone. That's the way you made a saint. So I am an absolute saint. Of course, I don't look like it. I don't deserve it. But that's my position in Christ. And you're going to see me in heaven because I'm a saint, made saintly by the blood of Jesus, by accepting what he did on the cross, believing in his finished work, believing in his resurrection and experiencing the power of it in my life. You know, we talked a lot about over these last uh, nine months about the fact we are made worthy in Christ, but now we live worthy. If we understand the gospel at all, as explained beautifully in the first three chapters of Ephesians, it absolutely has to affect the way we live. It's got to affect our marriages, our family life, our work life. It must, or we just haven't understood it. It must unite us and reconcile us, not just with God, but with our fellow man. That's why much as we must do, and it's right to do all we can to release and encourage people of every colour and every race in the Church of Christ and at the message, by far the best thing we can do to unite people, to reconcile people, to bring people, bring down the dividing wall of hostility between people is to preach the gospel. I, you know, I celebrate the fact that around 20% of our staff are, you know, BAME, black and minority ethnic community. How great is that? And we want to model something of beautiful community living together. But the way to do that is to focus on the gospel, is to focus on Jesus, for his word to be alive in our hearts, to bringing us together first and foremost. So as we preach the gospel, that's the way we see human hearts change. Only the gospel can change the human heart. My friend uh, was a policeman before he became a pastor. And he was sharing to me in his days back in the 70s that actually, as he's looked back onto those days, he realised he was a racist. And after work, all the policemen in North Manchester would go to, the, to Bernard Manning's Embassy Club. You really don't want to go there. Fortunately, it's not open anymore. But Bernard was this slightly racist comedian and the Embassy Club would have jokes that would just appall us nowadays in the 70s. And it, 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 it was... Uh, when he came to Christ, that his heart was changed and his heart was softened. And now he's leading this beautiful multi-ethnic church. You know, that's what Jesus can do. Jesus can take John Newton, the wicked slave trader, and turn him not just into a recipient of amazing grace, but somebody who pours out amazing grace on a needy world. So we could have finished, to be honest, after the last few weeks, you know, the... the um, epic stuff around the armour of God and then the need last week to lace it all in prayer but there's so much more as the final credits roll of the book of Ephesians now if you go to the cinema you remember that you remember those things called the cinemas we used to go to in the dim and distant past but if you used to go to the cinema when the final credits start to roll and the music comes up most people in the cinema would stand up and leave the building but there's a few cinema geeks like Ben Jack, who works for The Message, who want to know who the best boy grip was in this movie or whatever it was. The final credits are rolling. And for people like Ben, there can occasionally be magnificent surprises because occasionally movies put in all the outtakes and all the guys who are on the way to the car park miss out on the fun and games that, you know, the last few stragglers who are left in the cinema experience. And I feel like a little bit like that about the end of the book of Ephesians. As we focus on these closing words from Paul, there's so much more than we would ever imagine. Of course, remember as well that 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful. So this bit of the Bible is in there for a purpose. God has carefully crafted all scripture. And the last few verses of Ephesians chapters 20, chapter 6, verses 20 to 24 are God breathed. These are the final greetings, the final words from the letter to the Ephesians. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you also may, may know how I am and what I'm doing. I'm sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. I love the Bible. The Bible is uh, full of complicated characters. Aren't you glad? The Bible heroes are often people who acted at times like complete jerks. You know, Noah, the last righteous man on earth, we also find him in Genesis, drunk and naked and making an utter embarrassment of himself. Wouldn't you be, if you were Noah, wouldn't you be like, Lord, could we please just keep that little incident out of Genesis? You know, please, I, I was the righteous guy and you, you saved the whole world because of me and my family and, and now I'm being made to look like a right clown. Abraham was the forefather of the faith, yet let other men walk off with his wives on two different occasions. Isaac, nearly killed by his father, talked his wife into concealing the marriage. Jacob, who out-wrestled God, was pretty much a pathological deceiver. Moses, who was called the most humble man on earth, had a serious problem with temper. David, the friend of God, concealed his adultery and murder. I mean, the Bible is such a real book. And yet here in Ephesians chapter 6 is Tychicus. And there's no bad press. To be fair, he's only a bit part actor. He, he pops up about three or four times in the New Testament. But if you want my Oscar for supporting actor, Tychicus. Listen how Paul describes this guy. He describes him as a dear brother, a faithful servant. He goes on to say in the book of Colossians, he was a faithful minister. He's one of those people who makes a leader like Paul's life an absolute blessing. A guy who he could put his trust in. A guy who he could send off on his missionary journeys uh, uh, without confidence that he was going to serve the, the early church well. A guy who he could give gifts to the churches to. Metichicus was a dear brother, a faithful servant, and he went on to become a faithful minister. So many of us want ministries, but the key to a ministry, ministry is being a faithful servant and a dear brother. Beautiful man like Tychicus was. A life well lived. I wonder if that could be described, people would describe you and me. You know, a dear brother, a real mate, someone who's there for you through thick and thin. You know, a, a faithful servant behind the scenes who goes above and beyond. And yes, at the right time, becoming a faithful minister who has great fruit through their life. And, and fruitfulness always comes on the back of faithfulness. And in Paul's day, of course, there was no emails, limited postal service. But Paul recognised the absolute crucial role partners play in his ministry. So he sent his dear brother, faithful servant and faithful minister, as a living letter. And he had two goals, according to Paul. The, the goal was to encourage you and let you know how we're doing. Our prayer supporters are so important, more important than I believe we ever realise. We need to share our stories with them. Thank God for all he's doing in us, encourage them. But we also need to share our needs with them. As Paul and Paul realised this was vital stuff, he was never going to fulfil his mission recall without faithful supporters. And so he would send guys like Tychicus out to let them know, A, how we're doing, and B, encourage you with all that God's doing. Paul also realised that it's great to have mighty sound doctrine. Of course it was, and practical teaching on marriage and family and work. But it's also vital that that's worked out in this messy thing called community. As I was preparing this message, you know, in my office, last few days, dibbing in and out of Ephesians and thinking about it, um, I, I was kind of thinking, wow, you know, I think a lot of people know about the ministry I'm involved in. You know, a lot of people know about the encouragements of the message. They know about Message TV and Love With Ensure and all we're trying to do with alleviating child poverty and so much more, the work in the prisons and schools and all that stuff, you know, we're doing. They know about all these things we're doing. But I wonder how many of my friends truly know how I'm doing. Interestingly, just before this whole pandemic thing, several people brought to me a picture of Aaron and her holding up Moses' arms. And several people said, it's a season when you're going to be like Moses 
and you're going to need people to come alongside you and hold up your arms. And actually, two or three of those people independently says, I want to be that guy or that girl who holds up your arms. And well, that was, I think, a, a word from the Lord that in this season of trying to navigate all this madness of the pandemic, trying to move the ministry forward, trying to get this show back on the road, trying to reach the masses for Jesus, how much does a leader like me and leaders in your church need people who just come alongside them and hold their arms up, you know, rather than dig them in the ribs just when they're absolutely exhausted and about to drop their arms? Finally, he brings it into land with verses, words that sum up the whole gospel. In fact, four words that sum up the whole gospel. Listen to this, the last words of the letter to the Ephesians. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Here's four words that sum up the gospel according to Paul. Peace, love, faith, grace. There are words. It's a marvellous climax to everything he's been sharing in the book of Ephesians. The more you understand how they relate to your life with Jesus, the more you'll enjoy that life and the more your life will be marked by faithfulness and fruitfulness. Peace is, if you like, the word for Ephesians. Paul says, Jesus is our peace. He has broken down the wall of hostility and created a single humanity. Jesus preached peace. That's what Paul said. His message was peace, peace with God and peace with your fellow man. With peace, a rich man. Sorry, with peace, a poor man is rich. Without peace, a rich man is poor. Peace and love are two beautiful bedfellows. If you understand what real peace with God is, it will always lead to loving actions. We're literally meant to be pervaded by peace and love as Christians. Are we? Am I? Is my life marked by the peace of Jesus through all the rubbish that's thrown at me? and all the discouragements and all the disappointments. Am I walking in that peace? Am I pouring out love on a world in need? You certainly can't be without faith. That's why you receive peace in love in your hearts through faith. Faith alone in Christ alone. They're the birthday gifts of the Christian. Peace that lasts, passes understanding and love that lasts forever. And the final word in Ephesians is given to grace. There's a surprise. Grace, the thing that makes all the difference, the thing that marks out Christianity as different from any other way. The grace of God, the undeserved love of God, God's riches at Christ's expense, as if I deserve that, but praise God, I get that. I get grace upon grace. I get to know God now personally and I get to spend eternity with him in heaven. There's got to be a wow factor about that, hasn't there? Have we lost the sheer glory of grace, God's amazing grace? I want to love Jesus with an undying love, don't you? I want that to be the mark. I want my love of Jesus to burn hot until I see him face to face. So nine months ago, we started this letter. And in my first talk, I spoke on chapter one, verse two, which says grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess where we end? Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and grace to all who love the Lord Jesus with an undying love. May we be those channels of his peace, displaying his grace in all we do. I, I just want to pray. In a moment, I want to ask Sam Ward to come and lead some prayer for us, um, for the message and for you out there. But right now, I just as we end this book of Ephesians, can we receive? Jesus says, if you ask for these good things by the Holy Spirit, as if he'll give you a bad thing, we receive peace, that passes understanding.
So many struggling with mental health problems. So many lacking peace. So many fearful at the moment. We receive the peace of Jesus. Beautiful birthday gift of the Christian. My peace I give to you, says Jesus. We receive love, love that's everlasting, unconditional, the love of God. Not like man's love that comes and goes. Some of you have experienced love that's broken your heart. You were so in love and then it all went pear-shaped. God will never break your heart. His love is everlasting and unconditional. Faith that moves mountains, even mountains of culture. See, faith in Jesus is what's going to change this culture. Give us that kind of faith, Lord, to boldly proclaim your name, to lift your gospel high, to be unashamed in loving the poor and preaching the good news. Faith that rises, faith that grows, faith that breeds faith, all laced with grace. Not foaming at the mouth, fundamentalists who, who frighten people into the kingdom, but people who just love the poor and pour out God's undeserved love so a world can come together under the amazing banner of the gospel. Do you like the sound of it? You should do. It's flipping amazing. It's the good news of Jesus. It's grace and peace and love and faith. Let it be modelled evermore through the message and through our lives. Bring it on. Amen. All right, thanks for listening. And as I said, Sam's in the room. In fact, it's a very big room with four people in. Two, two techies a long way away, and me and Sam. And, uh, but I just thought it'd be nice for Sam to pray for us. And specifically, I wanted to ask Sam to pray into Message TV. There's a lot of filming going on at the moment, producing a whole programme of uh, events pretty much every day where we'll be blasting out from here in Manchester to the world, good news, teaching and inspiration for Christians during the day, evangelism and outreach and discipleship, reaching out to young people in the evenings. Pray for Message TV that will launch at the start of July. Pray for Love Withenshaw. Just across the road from where I'm stood right now is the largest council estate in Britain, around 80,000 people who need Jesus, many of them. And we want to pour out love this summer and in an ongoing way, just bless that council estate. And we want to see churches grow and churches planted and precious things happen. People fed and people uplifted and the place looking better and the kingdom advancing all across Withenshaw. Would you pray for that? And finally, Sam's been working really hard with a whole group of Christian ministries on, on a vision, an amazing big vision to alleviate child poverty. I mean, it sounds nuts, doesn't it? But it's a vision and we join with Marcus Rashford to say, let's see our children fed. Let's not have hungry children in this nation. And if the church could just rise up, maybe we could even see that beautiful thing happen. So we're going to pray. We're certainly going to do our best, give it our best shot. Here's the beautiful man that is Sam Ward. Go for it, mate. Thanks. Incredible message. Thank you, Andy. Let's uh, spend some time in prayer, shall we? Yes, Lord, we thank you so much for your peace. Thank you for that incredible message, just a reminder that you give us your peace. That those who follow you, those who choose to be yours, you gift them your peace, heavenly peace. That shalom, that, that peace that goes beyond understanding. And this morning we want to be a people that receive your peace. And we pray for peace, Lord. We pray for peace across the world. We pray for peace in our nation. And we pray for peace within the message trust. Lord Jesus, would you send your peace upon us? And Lord, we want to receive your grace, grace, a fresh measure of your grace this morning. Lord, may we know its newness, its freshness, like mercy is new each morning. Lord, we receive your grace afresh this morning. Pour it upon us. Lavish your grace upon us, we pray. And Lord, we turn our hearts to you, God, asking for your help. We think about Message TV and we, we long to put your name uh, on a stand. We long to, to shine you brightly around the world, God. And so we pray for your help. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us, to give us the inspiration that we need, to give us creativity and insight into culture and how to speak truth and life into our nation and around the globe. Lord God, I pray blessing 
on all those doing stuff. Lord, I lift up to here Ian and the team that he's, he's forming around him to be able to build the infrastructure that we need to be able to uh, communicate to the world. Lord, I pray for all those mission teams that we have who are, who are trying to find the best way to communicate. Lord, would you give them all that they need? Father, we pray this thing would run wide and wouldn't just go wide in that we produce much content, but would go wide in its impact, Lord. And we pray now, God, for salvation to come. Lord, we would see a generation that would say that they heard the good news of the gospel through Message TV. Lord, we pray that you would add many to your church. Lord, we pray that discipleship would kick up to a new level, that we'd be so much better at following people up. So I pray for your anointing, Jesus, upon those who are going to be leading and those who are going to be sharing. In Jesus' name, I pray. And Lord, we lift up with Ensure to you, God, right on our doorstep here at HQ. And Lord, we pray for your blessing. And we pray, Lord, send your kingdom. May your kingdom come and your will be done in this neighbourhood. Lord, we pray for those many thousands of children who will be considered living in poverty. And we say, enough, Lord. Help us, God, as we work with others to feed them and to see them nurtured and well. Lord, we pray for all the great ideas that we've got to serve this neighbourhood, to see gardens and, and houses transformed, Lord. May it be a sign of your kingdom come in that place. And so, Lord, we pray for the team that are pulling this together. We pray for great partnership and unity amongst the churches in Withenshaw. And we say, in your name, may your kingdom come. Lord Jesus. And Lord, I lift up to you all these plans for child poverty, this lockdown hunger initiative. Lord, I pray that unity amongst these partners would see your blessing come and that your blessing would be for the nation, that your blessing would be poured out upon the children of our nation. Lord, I pray that you would stir the hearts of churches when they hear about this initiative. Would it be formed in such a way that it captivates them and stirs them for mission? Lord, I pray you would turn your church inside out towards the lost and the broken, to the hurting and the hungry. Lord Jesus, would you come and minister to us and through us in Jesus' name. Lord, would unity amongst us be the thing of blessing? Lord, would you help us to work together? Again, give us wisdom and insight and understanding about how to do that best. And finally, Lord, I pray for a blessing upon all those working throughout the message. I think about those guys in Wales who are serving Trowbridge so beautifully over the past few days and thinking about creative initiatives to declare and share your name. Lord, I think about the Midlands and all that is excitingly bubbling away under the surface and for the Northeast too. Blessing on Terry and Joe and uh, Darren, Lord God. Would you pour out your spirit in our hubs in Jesus' name. Lord, all this is yours. And we choose again just to say, Father, have your way. Lord, we have great plans, but continue to command our steps. Father, we say, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Boom. How good was that? So uh, that's it for this morning's uh, Tuesday prayers. Next week, we're going to have a little band, uh, socially distanced, and uh, maybe a slightly more extended Tuesday. So please, if you're interested in Message TV at all, will you go on our YouTube channel, will you like it, switch on notifications, and, and over the next few weeks, we'll spread the programme and all the exciting things that are going to happen there. Also, Greater Manchester Prayer, just one more reminder, please join in a week on Thursday, June the 25th, for the nations, we're going to gather thousands of people online to pray and for the nation and for your city, believing for a move of God on the, on the back of all the craziness of this pandemic. So beautiful. Have a great day, everybody. God bless. Thanks for listening and watching. <laughs>